Hi there, I'm Chris Thomas, and I've been covering the headphone industry for about 14 years now. Over those 14 years, a lot of you have tried to reach out to me through comments and messages and LinkedIn requests, asking me different questions that today I'm going to answer for you. So maybe I can get a little peace and quiet. All right, first question. Do I need lossless? So the latest thing on all the streaming services is lossless this, lossless that. What is a lossless audio file? A lossless audio file is one in which there really hasn't been any compression applied to it. That means they're not pulling out any data that you probably couldn't hear anyway. They're just keeping the audio file as is. These audio files are huge because they contain a ton of data. The truth of the matter is, is that there's so much R&D poured into lossy compression that a lot of people don't even really notice or care anymore. It used to be that the rule of thumb was you needed 320 kilobits per second to get music that was really tough to distinguish between MP3 and CD, but you know that was almost 10 years ago now. You don't need lossless unless you're trying to archive music or work with it as a producer. Should I get third-party ear tips? Well, if you really like your in-ears and they're just a little bit off, you're having trouble getting them to fit, then yeah, give them a try. You may want to give memory foam a try. For example, Comply makes pretty good third-party memory foam ear tips, as the problem may not be your in-ears themselves, but simply how they hold on to your ear canal or the wrong size. If you can't get the right size with your in-ears, then yeah, they're gonna need some help. Should I get third-party ear pads for my headphones? Uh, I don't know what performance upgrades they promise to give you, but they probably won't pan out the way you're thinking. I wouldn't get them to, you know, make everything better, but if your ear pads are starting to chip and flake and get all over the carpet, yeah, you should probably get third-party ear pads if they're a little bit more comfortable. They're worth a shot if you're looking for something a little bit more comfortable, but otherwise don't put too much stock into how, uh, them changing anything for your audio. Should I get more expensive headphones? Uh, well, if you can spare the money, probably. Expensive headphones uh, are a really great way to anger your wife and get your family to leave you, but if you are not looking at conspicuous consumption and you're just looking to invest in a product that will last you a few years longer than your typical earbuds do, then yeah, Buy for the right reasons. Look for build quality, look for good materials, and look for comfort. Higher price tag does not equal better. Uh, and there have been several observations to this fact that there is zero relationship between frequency uh, response performance and price. Should I get cheap headphones? Yeah, actually, cheap headphones are a great way to test certain things without actually jumping all the way in for something. Sometimes you just don't have a lot of money to sink into this. In-ear monitors are a great way to get into hi-fi audio without spending a ton of money. And really, they don't require that much power most of the time, so you can get away with an Apple or Google dongle for nine bucks. Sometimes it's just better to spend 20, 30, 40 bucks on something before taking the plunge and dumping in 300, 400 dollars for earbuds or uh, audiophile headphones. Should I burn in headphones? <sighs> sure, there's no risk of us getting demonetized? <laughs> well, it depends on what you're about to do. Something bad. <laughs> so this is a persistent myth in the audiophile community, and I gotta say, it's one that has uh, really been an extremely annoying one. The original myth of burn-in came in from older speaker designs that had stiffer baffles and sometimes needed to be used a little bit before, before it was a little bit more flexible. Uh, that's not the case with headphones. Anything that happens to those speaker units inside the headphones themselves uh, if there's a material change, that's a break. That is a bad thing. Your headphone performance will not get better for doing this. It will get worse. It will add distortion. It will, you know... <laughs> you do not need to burn in your headphones. Don't do it. Just listen to them like a normal person. Please, I'm begging you. Should I get an amp? The issue is getting enough power to the headphones to create a usably loud signal. If you're using wireless headphones, no. If you're using wired headphones, 
You're going to need to check the specs on the specifications page or one of our reviews to see whether or not your source device can power your headphones. I will say over the last 10 years, a great deal of headphones have gotten a lot better at using a lot less energy to get good sound and the need for an amp is pretty substantially reduced. Even laptops nowadays have pretty significantly improved what their uh, whole stack looks like. So most of the time, if you have a mini TRS jack or a TS plug, you can get enough power. If you can plug your headphones into something and get a usable volume level, congrats, you don't need an amp. Should I get a DAC? A DAC, or Digital to Analog Converter Unit, is a separate unit that often is connected by a USB cable from a source device to offload the sound processing duties from your computer into this little thing. This was a lot more popular during the 2010s and the 2000s because a lot of computers had really noisy insides, uh, a lot of AM interference. You don't need those anymore. A lot of the systems on a chip have been able to essentially offload this and there's really not the same noise problems anymore. I suppose if you have a really high-end system that we're talking multiple thousands of dollars here, you might see a little bit of an improvement, but at that point you're just chasing the dragon. No amount of money you spend is going to improve the signal chain unless you're talking about seriously outdated vintage gear or some other problem that could be fixed otherwise. Can I get replacement AirPods if I ran them over? <laughs> if I replace, you mean buy new ones? Sure. All right. Is vinyl better than digital? Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated. Technically, no. However, it's the mixing where the difference lies. Vinyl has a lot more restrictions on how it can be mixed and produced, Whereas digital, you can crank things up to <laughs> zero dBFS and relatively be okay. In the 2000s and 2010s, a lot of producers of pop would essentially blast levels out to the max and clip a lot of recordings, leading to a degradation in sound quality. Whereas vinyl can't do that. Otherwise, the, the needle would skip, you'd break your records, all sorts of bad stuff. So while the dynamic range is a lot narrower on vinyl, uh, digital tends to sound worse simply because of the actual art of the recording. Now, this has changed in recent years and a lot of remasters and a lot of new music is getting mastered with a lot better practices, so digital is starting to pull away. However, that hasn't dented the popularity of vinyl. It's just fun, and sometimes that's enough. Are beats bad? Not anymore. They hired a lot of really smart people to improve their products over time so that they could shed some of this reputation. I'm not going to bash Beats because they've actually put in the effort. You personally may not like what they have, that doesn't mean that they're as bad as they used to be or where they started. If you want to buy Beats, try them out first. And if you like them, whatever, go with them, have fun. The best headphones you can buy are the ones that you like. Can I tell when a friend was listening to Spotify? Can someone tell if I check their history? Can I track, <laughs> oh God, I'm not even gonna finish that one. Um, get help, they're not into you. Do something else with your time. Don't be so worried about what other people are doing with their own time in music listening. Just stop. I don't wanna answer this. I don't want to know what I would be helping you do should something happen. Uh, can these earbuds be worn in the shower? I know a lot of people are going to ignore me on this one, but don't wear earbuds in the shower. There's so many reasons not to do it, and only half of them are about eventual damage to the earbuds. Just, it's not a good idea. Don't do it. Uh, find another way to listen to music unless you've actually got waterproof earbuds, in which case, I mean, uh. Why does the Sennheiser HD650 score low on multi-dimensional audio quality scores? Okay. This one is a little important to go over the context of these scores. For years now, so many people have tried to objectively score audio quality and the best effort so far has been Head Acoustics multi-dimensional audio quality scores, which we now use for scoring all of our headphones. Multi-dimensional audio quality scores were based on the responses of hundreds of normal people. And what normal people want are a lot of bass. What audiophiles want are not as much bass, probably something a little bit more accurate. 
something they're not going to be taking on the subway, something they're not going to be taking on an airplane, something that's staying at home in the presence of very little noise so that they don't have to drown any other sounds out. So it's not a surprise to us when these multidimensional audio quality scores weight bass response so heavily and surprise, surprise, we get a lot of true wireless earbuds and a lot of consumer options scoring really, really well. For most people, this will track with their experience, but for audiophiles, that's why we front load the measurements so that people who are enthusiasts and actually understand more about this and know what they want can get that information quicker without just looking at a score and turning your brain off. This is a feature, not a bug. I would much rather somebody who is very enthusiastic about audiophile headphones read the review instead of look at a number and make their decisions that way. Why don't you use the Harman Target? Well, when we bought our newest test head, we had to take a big risk and we had to spend a lot of money on something that would be current for the next 10 or so years. And that wasn't going to be the existing affordable test rigs at the time. So we took a big risk and we took the Brule and KR 5128 test head. But the problem was at the time, the Harman Target was only available for a certain test rig that was quite old, didn't really measure down below 100 hertz or above 10 kilohertz uh, very well, um, or at least very reliably. So we were stuck. We could either post measurements without any context whatsoever and hope that people would understand what that was meant by that, or we could develop our own curve, and that's what we did. We developed our own curve. We had our curve validated uh, last year, and then Harman themselves tested this. I think it was two weeks ago now. It's very well received by a lot of people, and it's nice to get that validation, but the reason why we don't do use the Harman curve is because it didn't exist when we needed it, and it still doesn't exist in total today uh, for this test rig, and it will be a while before the studies and validations come through in order to establish that standard again. What are the best headphones? Okay, truth be told, the whole reason there is even a community around headphones and audiophilia is because there is no one answer to this question. However, the best headphones in my experience are the headphones that meet your needs. That could be the Cost Porta Pros. It could be something cheap. It could be something expensive. It could be the next greatest thing. It could be something that doesn't even exist yet. There is not a wrong answer, okay? So stop beating yourself up if you feel buyer's remorse by going on to a forum or something and having everybody shout you down for listening to Grados. Again, with any hobby or any product that you buy meant to augment your life, as long as you're having fun, the best headphones on the market are the ones that fit you, the ones that make you happy. Don't worry about what other people think. That's their problem. If you do have more questions that you'd like answered, leave them in the comments. That's the appropriate place for them. Yeah, YouTube is fine. Don't go searching me up. Don't go looking for my phone number. Don't go looking on LinkedIn. Don't go sending me passive aggressive notices through my email. I don't like it. But until next time, guys, th thanks for watching and happy listening.